Hi guys, this is GSNOL.com and I'm here with a handset called the AllView X2 Soul for a full review. This is actually the thinnest smartphone in the world. It's a rebranded Johnny eLife S5.5 and the name S5.5 comes from the thickness. This device only measures 5.55 millimeters and it was launched in May 2014 and the price tag is $380. As you can see, it's incredibly slim. As I said, the thinnest smartphone in the world. Let's talk about the design. So this is an ultra slim phone, measures 5.55 millimeters in thickness and it weighs 129 grams. In Eastern Europe it's called Allview X2 Soul and we got glass at the back and also a glass layer at the front just like the Xperia models from the past years. This means that it can easily get fingerprints and grease on on the back and on the front however it's a very elegant device as you can see. Maybe it's even a bit too thin for some people it's almost feminine it's that thin. The materials are premium so this model is made 98% from glass and metal and it's actually coated with Gorilla Glass 3 protected uh, uh, glass and uh, the side frame is actually an aluminum alloy for extra resilience. And I should say that the front glass measures uh, 0.55 millimeters in thickness and the back glass 0.40 millimeters. The design is angular as you can see, straight lines all the way, there's no curve here, an angular design. In spite of being made of glass, this phone is not slippery, it sits well in the hand and you will not drop it because of its design. Um, the grip is quite okay, as I said, we have very small bezels at the front, as you can see. And other things we're mentioning are the capacitive buttons at the front, you can see here. We got the home button, back button and menu button below the display. Then we got the front camera over here, the earpiece next to it and the ambient light sensor and proximity sensor also above the display. On the left side we find the volume buttons and on off button here. And they're both thin but also comfy and have good feedback. On the right side we have the micro SIM card slot that should be removed with a key, this tray. And at the top we got the micro USB port, while at the bottom we find the audio jack and a microphone right next to it. At the back side we got the camera, the flash and between them a small microphone and here at the bottom we find the speakers. This design is very nice, very elegant for this handset and you can buy it in black or white. We move further to the hardware and on the hardware side we discover some interesting things. So first of all we got this display right here, it's actually a pretty good display, 5 inch Super AMOLED made by Samsung, it's a full HD screen with 441 ppi density and one glass solution technology. The CPU is an octa-core Cortex-A7 Mediatek MT8, uh, MT6592 clocked at 1.7 GHz, so octa-core, which means quite a bit of power. The GPU here is a Mali 450MP clocked at 750 MHz and the RAM is 2 GB just in case you are wondering. And I should probably mention the storage, that's 16 gigabytes available on this model, there's no micro SD card slot because the device is so slim. At the back we have a 13 megapixel camera with a Sony sensor, while at the front we have a 5 megapixel shooter that's actually pretty good. On the connectivity side we're completely covered, we got uh, FM radio with RDS, HD voice, HSPA+, Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi BGN, Wi-Fi Direct, Wi-Fi Display, Micro USB 2.0, GPS and 3G video call among others. I should probably mention that uh, we've also got DTS sound, an accelerometer, gyroscope and digital compass. Finally we have reached the battery area, so it's time to go to the screenshots and see how the battery handled our tests. Okay, so let's see what we got here. This is the battery test. So we're dealing with a 2300 mAh battery, lithium ion unit with SDI technology. Allview promises about 10 hours of talk time or 9 days of standby in our test, which usually involves video playback, continuous in a loop, with Wi Fi on and brightness of 50%. We achieved 2 hours and 51 minutes as shown right here with the display on for the whole time and the CPU power saving mode deactivated. This is pretty weak. 2 hours and 51 minutes, but it's a sacrifice because of the slim waistline. By the way, I got about 3 hours of gaming from this model, so that's also pretty weak. And one more test, I took the handset out 
to take some pictures with it and some videos and after 100 pictures and 5 videos I lost no less than 32% of the battery. And now let's go to the other options related to the battery. One more thing to mention here is the charging time. The phone will charge in 2 hours and 23 minutes, it's decent but it's about equal to the battery life so kind of underwhelming. Ok so going to the battery area, we got the CPU power saving mode that once activated will limit the maximum CPU performance to conserve battery life and lower the temperature which believe me you will need. Then there is an app that I'm going to look for, it's called Power Manager. You can see it right here, it gives you an estimation of the usage time that you have left. And um, we got power settings, so you can enable power saving at a certain percentage. And you can turn off uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data connection, GPS, set uh, brightness intelligently and tweak the um, brightness. Ok, there is also a special night power saving mode and these are the settings from earlier, you can also change the screen timeout, there is auto clean for the background process, which frankly speaking I don't know why it's related to the battery, anyway that's the power saving we have available here and here you can see what's using up your battery on this device. There is also a cute little widget for this app, here it is, you can enter power saving with the press of a button, see an estimation of time and the percentage of the battery. That's it, as I said, I'm underwhelmed by the 2 hours and 51 minutes of video playback. Now we move over to the audio and there's a lot of promise from that. We see here DTS sound, digital true surround and also there is a Yamaha amplifier inside so expectations are very high. The music player, let's check it out, let's find it. The interface, well some people said it remembered them of the Oppo player. To me it looks like the player from the Allview X1 Extreme. Another handset from all of you we've tasted lately. Okay, so um, let's see what the options available here are. Once you're in a song, you press DTS and you see these options. You can tweak the focus, bass boost, 3D effect. Also, you can strengthen the volume, tweak space, reverberation, clarity, and have these presets here. That once pressed, they'll change every setting automatically. Standard nature, surround voice, default, or yet again standard. So that's the DTS effect apply to your device. Ok, so now let's actually listen to a tune and maybe apply those effects. Maximum volume right now. We also have a shake function. Ok, so we also have a special sleep timer, so if you're falling asleep you can set it to automatically shut down and now let's see those effects. That's the bass boost, that's the focus, 3D effect, the reverb, the clarity and the volume strengthening. Frankly speaking, the volume centering is kind of useless because it actually amplifies the sound too much and makes it sound a bit broken. I would say that the speakers are reasonably loud and um, they're a bit underwhelming compared to what Allview usually offers us. When we're testing an Allview phone, we find the volumes to be huge. This time it's only reasonably loud. The voices are good, I have to say that, and the bass is decent but not more than that. We also get a bunch of headphones bundled in the box. They remind me of the time when HTC and the Beats work together, they go pretty deep in the ear, they're still pretty comfy, and the volume is surprisingly weak, I was actually shocked by that, the bass is ok, but I wanted more from the headphones, that's why I'm surprised negatively by the volume. Let's go to our test. We have a decibel meter that we bought a while ago, and we're using it to test the strength of various devices when it comes to acoustics. So here it is, this is the decibel meter and this is the phone facing with the speaker towards us 
84.3 decibels and now the phone with the speaker on a flat surface 79.6 decibels okay so basically we're with about 10 decibels below the LG G Pro 2 tablet which is a premium device so I would say we're not doing so bad the audio is okay maybe we'd like a bit more volume especially on the headphones and at the speakers as well we also have FM radio by the way let's look it up you have to connect the headphones at the bottom you may find that unusual unless you own an iPhone here's FM radio and the features include search speaker record FM and RDS settings okay that's all the time we have for the audio section as I said everything is okay aside from the volume of the headphones and maybe a bit of the volume of the speakers now on the video side what you can see here is a 5 inch super AMOLED screen it's full HD it has a 441 ppi density Gorilla Glass 3 protection and one glass solution technology we also have a video player here and uh, you can use it with gloves by the way and even with wet hands if it's raining this is our test video that we use in all of our reviews as you can see the screen is bright it's crisp we got vivid colors and wide viewing angles of course since this is a super AMOLED screen it's not exactly an IPS but still viewing angles are quite wide there's a very interesting aspect of this screen I find the images to be very smooth it's just like the times when you're watching a 60 frame per second video only the experience is repeated even to non 60 per, uh, frames per second video the image is vibrant and the video player comes with a pop-up play like option of course it lags a bit you can keep doing your activity and still watch the video then get back to the full screen experience as I said a bit of lag happens this video player supports DivX, XVID, uh, AV and MP4 files and it's got Pentile Matrix pixels with a diamond pixel arrangement so let's see them we also have a microscope that we use to test devices so here is the pixel arrangement under the microscope it's Pentile Matrix, it's a diamond pixel arrangement and this screen is on paper very similar to the one of the Galaxy S4 I have to say that this screen behaves very poorly in sunlight and uh, I had a very hard time taking pictures with it because I could not see the options of the camera which is a big no-no now the lux levels, we achieved 351 lux units this is uh, reasonably close to the Sony Xperia Z2 which is a flagship and has 366 lux so since we're close to a flagship I would say it's pretty decent overall the screen is pretty bright viewing angles are good the screen is crisp has vivid colors and a bit of oversaturation I must also mention that the black is pretty deep since it's a super AMOLED and overall overall it's a pretty great display I have to say and now off to the camera so what we're dealing with here is a 13 megapixel shooter at the back and a 5 megapixel shooter at the front the front sensor is an OV 5648 from Omnivision and the back one is actually a pretty good one it's a Sony IMX135 it's uh, that's the sensor and uh, this one applies a system called RGBW it has a white pixel extra compared to the usual sensors we have an LED flash and by the way the IMX135 sensor can also be found on the Sony Xperia Z LG G2 and surprise even the LG G3 of course it's not all in the sensor it's all about the module so if the module is different the performance is different this sensor measures one third of an inch and the pictures have 1.2 micron pixels now let's see the interface as I said I've tested uh, several all you phones before and the interface will totally feel familiar for, for those who have followed our reviews so on the left side we have find the settings the shortcut to the front camera and the flash options here we have the video capture shutter button and shortcut to the gallery okay now let's see the settings so we have two settings mode this one is the normal mode and this one is the professional mode let's take them one by one in the normal mode we have HDR auto scene sound geotagging capture mode with normal take a V sign take a picture touch shot or smile shot then self timer with a few options 
picture size, you can opt for uh, 13 megapixels in 4 to 3 aspect ratio or 12 megapixels in 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Use the volume keys to shoot stuff or zoom and finally some anti-banding options. Then we switch to the professional mode that by the way can also work in landscape and we find here the auto scene mode, level meter, face detection, sound, geotagging, resolution, white balance, exposure value and ISO going up to 1600. And uh, then we find the self timer again, capture mode and this little mode area where we have auto, sport for fast moving actions, night, HDR, panorama that can go up to 360 degrees and we're back to the auto mode. Okay, so those are the photo settings. Now off to the video settings. Yet again, this time we only have a single mode. There's no professional mode. We have geotagging, anti-shaking, microphone, video quality. You can film in 720p or 1080p. Some scene modes, auto or night. Time duration, unlimited 10 minutes, 30 minutes. White balance, exposure, and that's about it as far as the video experience is concerned. Now let's actually take a picture. Here we go. Reasonably fast, I would say, for a handset price below $400. And the pictures are very bright. Sometimes I would say too bright. I'm going to cover that later. Level of detail is quite good. And that's the picture I've just taken of this little castle. Okay, now we're off to the gallery where we have uh, over 100 pictures taken in a park. We have bright flowers. We even attempted some macro shots. 116 pictures to play with. So let's take them one by one. Generally, the pictures are crisp. There is no noise. We have good brightness. The colors may feel a bit too warm. And by the way, this is an HDR, regular picture. HDR picture, it's quite whitish. And an important thing to mention, once you take an HDR picture, both versions will be kept, normal one and HDR one. This is a panorama that can go up to 360 degrees. Let's see other shots. As I said, some of the shots feel a bit too bright and a slight exaggerated warmness of the colors. However, we do have a bunch of good close-ups. And I mean flowers here as usual. Lots of details in these flowers. Not exactly a typical definition of macros, but at least we tried. And yet another one. This one is actually pretty good. And finally a new panorama, this time in full 360 degree beauty. Overall I would call these pictures to be very good. And they actually remind me of another Allview phone, the Allview X1 Extreme, that sometimes even beat the Samsung Galaxy S5, and that tells a lot. By the way, these are low-light shots taken under a bridge in a park, and as you can see, they're quite good. If it weren't for that strange whiteness applied to some of the image, the camera would be close to perfect once again for this price tag. Okay, so very good pics, let's switch to audio. You can film in Full HD at about 30 frames per second. Sadly, the format is the one I hate the most. It's 3GP and it has a very low bitrate. It's about 14 mega per second. The contrast is good. The image feels a bit burnt in sunlight and a bit too bright. The focus is okay. And now let's find another video. We have actually five of them, if I'm not mistaken. Here is another one. The image is pretty crisp. Focus is okay, as I said. Overall, it's a decent video capture, but it could be just a little bit better. I would say that the photo taking beats the video taking as far as quality is concerned.
and one less video. Of course the screen makes them look more beautiful but in real life you'll see on YouTube they're not that beautiful. And I mean the videos here. Is the 3GP format spoiling the fun just a little bit? Okay, so we're done with the videos as well. You can even do a little bit of editing if you want. Select these uh, flowers, press this button, edit, and you'll see the usual options like a bunch of filters, black and white, bleach, instant, vintage, punch, a few frames, options to crop, straighten and rotate, or play with auto color, contrast, shadows, vibrance, curves, hue, saturation, or black or white. Okay, so that was the editing. Now the conclusions related to the camera. I would say that this camera is about uh, 70 or 80% of the quality of the AllView X1 Extreme that had a very good camera and is quite high praise for this model. You can actually play with the uh, Charm Cam app, pre-installed the device. It's uh, rather designed for selfies than uh, normal photographs. Let's bring back the castle. So here we go. As I said, we have a very good selfie camera, 5 megapixel shooter that lights up all the images you're dealing with. And now let's check out the Charm Cam application. So we got functions like face beauty that removes the wrinkles, makeup that will add the lip gloss and make up to your eyes, best face for selecting the best picture from a series of shots to your face, eraser, delete someone who's in the shot, live filters with a bit of lag and options like Lomo, Lomo Green, Grayscale, stamps allows you to take a picture with a frame, apply these little cute frames, laugh at people at a party and probably the best option, the one I like the most, it's called PPT. You can focus on powerpoints, whiteboards, you're in a class, you're at college, you're at school, you take a picture of a class or a blackboard or a whiteboard and everything is recorded perfectly. Finally, tracks, it's created specifically for pictures in motion. So that's was the Charm Cam application, usually made for selfies, but can also be used with a back camera. And now the temperature, we move further to the performance area where the temperature is included and sadly this device suffers from a bit of overheating. It's so thin that it was to be expected, usually phones made of glass that are very thin are overheating. We get 48 degrees Celsius and this model seriously suffers from overheating. It actually tends to burn your hand a bit, of course it doesn't exactly burn, but it's very hot after playing let's say half an hour of games and that's a bit bothersome. Now let's go to the browser. This is the site of the folks of AllView and let's access gsnon.com. Reasonably fast browser. Here is our web page. And reasonably comfy keyboard. So that's that. And now we're off to the benchmarks to see what the device can do when put to the test in a series of synthetic processes. We got screenshots, you're probably wondering what devices we chose to compare this model to. We chose a, a local device, it's called the Evolio X6. It's a, also an octa-core device with the same MediaTek CPU. And we also chose a surprise, the Samsung Galaxy S4, since the two seem to share a very similar display. And now in Quadrant, the AllView X2 Soul scores 14,654 points. We got beaten by the Evolio X6 with its 15,000 points and we beat the Galaxy S4 with its 12,000 points. In Antutu, a pretty good score, 27,630. We beat the Evolio X6 by about 1,000 points and the Galaxy S4 narrowly beats us by about 400 points. In Nenamark, 57.2 frames per second. This is where we beat the Evolio X6 by 10, 10 frames per second. In the new Velamo, we got uh, 26, 24 points. This area is where we beat the Evolio X6 by about 700 points. We also beat the Galaxy S4 by 600 points, so we're sitting quite well. Other tests, Metal and Multicore in Velamo, we don't have a comparison yet because we didn't run them on those devices. In 3D Mark, Ice Storm Unlimited, 7138. We beat the Evolio X6 by 400 points and got beaten by the Galaxy S4 with its 10,000 points. Next up, Geekbench 3. 445 in the single core, 2464 in the multi core. We beat the Evolio X6 in both tests, that one has 430 and 2377. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S4 reaches 674 and uh, 1930, so at least we beat it in the multi core area. 
Next up, GFX Bench. Here it is, in the off-screen 1080p test we got 8.7 frames per second. The Volio Axis beat us with 9.6 frames per second and also Galaxy S4 got 9.2 frames per second in the Tyrex off-screen 1080p test. Back to the other tests, we got Browser Mark 2.1 here. We scored a pretty decent 818. We are actually past the Volio Axis with its 809 points. Here you can see the top, the Nexus 5 scores uh, 1600 points, so double the amount of this model. In Sun Spider we got a pretty poor 1074ms, the lower the better, but at least we beat the volume that scored 1110. Finally the speed test was a bit of a letdown. Here's why. We usually score around 20 mega per second in downloads with our router on most devices, this time 12 megabytes in download, 19 megabytes in upload, while the Evolio X6 scores 19 megabytes per second and 21. So overall the results are pretty good, once again this is a phone that costs less than $400 and I would say it's pretty decent for this price and these benchmarks are pretty okay. Of course there is no lag whatsoever in the regular average day usage and you can play every new game on this handset. I have to mention that this one is the single SIM device and as far as the phone features are concerned we have speed dial and we have a reasonably loud earpiece available here and also good signal so there is no problem with the audio calling. Also we have video calling available in case you want that. Now let's get into the software area. You're probably wondering what version of Android this is. We're running Android 4.2.2 for now. The rebrander of this device has promised uh, KitKat soon and as far as the interface is concerned you can see a little bit of customization here with some widgets, some themes and the usual icons that all view implements on devices that they customize. Here you can see the themes you can apply. These are the skins you can play with. You already saw them on other all view devices that we reviewed. And as I said we also have some special widgets as you can see by keeping the screen pressed. Here you go, these are the widgets. Some of them are stock, some of them are not. One of the best known stock widgets is this one related to the battery that I always praise. So wallpapers, themes, icons and widgets, that's all the customization you get from all of you. Um, let's see what else. In the settings area, I'm going to start the notification area first. So if you drop down this menu, you'll see two areas, notifications obviously, and settings where you can find these toggles for guest mode, timeout, quick power saving, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, brightness and more. Here you can actually edit those toggles if you want. And now we're getting to business. We're going to the real settings area where you can find options for your display. These options actually include a feature called um, alert, missed call and unread message. This one will allow the screen to blink the backlight for about 180 seconds which means about 3 minutes in order to alert you that you missed a call or text. So basically the backlight uh, blinks in order to notify you of missed stuff. We also have an interesting feature, it's called suspend button. Uh, supposing you don't like the capacitive buttons here, you can use this suspend button feature and replace it. It can actually trigger the lock screen, the back button and the home button with a simple tap. So you can forget about the capacitive buttons, we now have a special button that can do the exact same thing and it's made for people who don't like using those buttons from the lower area and they consider them to be relics or an older age. Okay, this was called the suspend button, we also have other features here, uh, let's see what else, battery storage options, smart gestures, there's also privacy settings. Here's the security area with a guest mode option, credentials and things like that. And as I said, smart gestures are available as well. So let's activate them and see what they're about. First of all, you got smart dial. So supposing you're on a contact page, uh, you can take the phone to your ear and you start calling that contact. Same applies for messages. Smart answer will allow you to pick up the phone to answer it without pressing anything. Pause alarm, you flip the phone back and the alarm is turned off. Double click wake, this one I can actually show you. So let's see if we got it activated first. So everything is activated, you should double click the screen to wake up from sleep mode, so let's try again. 
finally it work you have to really tap it strongly let's see the other features so smart gestures and there's this one quick operating this one allows you to draw stuff on the screen to trigger various features it's sort of a shortcut via drawing so if I draw a C I should be able to trigger the camera as I just did there's a slight bit of lag but you get the point useful feature if you want to get rid of some extra steps and extra pressing okay we're done with the smart gestures we proceed to other features we have a schedule airplane on or off, schedule power on or off and finally if you're in the lock screen and you do a swipe to the left side you'll see these nifty little options, a camera shortcut, a audio recording button, the torch feature and most importantly fake call. Imagine you meet a person on the street, you don't like that person and you want to simulate a call so you can get rid of them, this is it. I'm about to get a call in about 5 seconds after pressing this button. You can actually answer it or uh, don't answer it. The thing is that the person will feel bad if they see you're getting a call. I rejected it, of course, I can choose not to reject it and I can even set up who calls me. I can set a name here like mother, girlfriend or things like that so I can get rid of that annoying person. Now the app list, the pre-installed apps on this device include a compass among others. Here is the compass, not a moral compass, but a compass. And we also have Google Maps, obviously. With quite great precision, I have to say. Okay, I can choose satellite if I want to, and terrain, and things like that. Moving even further, actually maps look very nice on this Super AMOLED screen. And uh, we have FM radio, camera, charm cam, phone accelerate. This one allows you to clean the processes and if you shake your phone like this it will vibrate and clean up your processes and release some space in the device's memory which is kind of cool. And we also have a power manager that you saw earlier with an estimated time of run, system update, Google settings, screen off, basic application, color, color allows you to customize your wallpaper, theme and effects. If you want to download weather, a pretty cool weather app I have to say. Even audio effects are included. Then we got uh, themes that you already saw. And notes, your basic note taking application. You write everything you need here. You add a voice input or location on the map or a timer. And you can change the background if you want. We also have an app manager that allows you to uninstall apps, move apps, change permissions and check out the default app settings. Then we got traffic assistant. This one deals with the data traffic on your device. It monitors when you get past a certain limit. So if you want to spend too much, it's very useful. Video app, Bdefender mobile security antivirus with malware scanners, web security and anti-theft available here. A torch feature, screen off and lock, self care and finally Sidejig. Sidejig come pre-installed on the latest Android uh, and all view devices so if you buy an all view phone from eastern europe you'll find the sidekick app pre-installed it's a navigational app as you can see showing me details quite nice interface you can see routes travel book sos help a community settings area map management notifications and sounds battery info regional stuff and i'm sure there are speed cams alerts here and this one was sidekick Okay, this is the Allview X2 Soul and at the same time it's the rebranded version of the Johnny E-Life S5.5, the thinnest smartphone in the world. Now it's time for the end of the review, the pros and cons section of the handset. On the pro side we have a superb design, I have to say. This is probably one of the most elegant phones I've seen in 2014 so far. Not only because it's slim, but because it's 98% uh, metal and glass and that says a lot about premium qualities. We have good audio. And I mean the speakers here. We have a custom equalizer that works great thanks to the DTS stuff. A great display, I have to admit that. And uh, the picture quality is not that bad. We've taken over 100 pictures, which can confirm that aspect. And the charm cam is nice. The selfie features are also welcome. There is no lag. As you saw, there's no lag whatsoever. It can run the newest games without hassle. It has an octa-core CPU. And now on the con side, well, it's a big fingerprint magnet. It overheats quite a bit, it has very weak headphones, a pretty weak battery, 
it's very poor in sunlight, I mean the screen, and the video capture is very bad, that 3 GPP is not doing it favors. And not the grades, I have to warn you, the grades are pretty high, the design is the one that matters the most here, and people are actually willing to sacrifice battery for the sake of design. So, 9.8 out of 10 for design, a 9 for the hardware, and finally a 9 out of 10 for operating system and user interface on this handset. The final grade is 9.26 out of 10 here at gsnl.com for the Johnny eLife S5.5 aka All View X2 Soul. If you're willing to sacrifice some video capture and battery in favor of a gorgeous and superb smartphone, this is the device for you and it's also priced below $400. This is it from gsnl.com. Bye bye.